I've recently done two video tours of my other two telescope platforms, but I held off doing the third platform here until I had completed some upgrades and we had another sunny day. We just had a week of rain. So this morning I wanted to try to give you an overview of this. This is the very first telescope that I ever bought. And over the last four years, it's gone through a lot of evolutionary changes until the most recent one. It's been a great telescope, solid optics, uh, very well constructed, and I've been very pleased with it. First, let me talk about the optical tube assembly. Again, this is the Williams Optic 132mm FLT APO scope, which is a native F7 optical assembly. Uh, that's been modified recently with a flattener and reducer. On the back of that, I have the stock focuser, which I continue to use. It's a real solid focuser, and I've gotten good results with it. Driving that focuser is a Pegasus Astro Focus Cube 2. This is a very, very strong, very high torque motor, which uh, does a great job in working with heavier loads. Behind this, we have the new camera stack, which I just recently added on. We start off with a new addition, uh, which was a flattener and a 0.8 reducer. The flattener is necessary because I have a new camera on here, which has a larger sensor. And with a larger sensor, I start getting into the edge of the field where I'm getting some aberration. So we need to flatten that. And I took advantage of the reducer so that I could have a faster optical system. Behind that, we have the Pegasus Astro Falcon camera rotator. I really like working with the camera rotator, and I have this particular one on each of my platforms. I love being able to sit in my easy chair in an afternoon before an imaging session and laying out the composition of how I want a target to be framed in the, in the scene of the camera. And I love the fact that I can have multiple targets in an evening, and as I move from one target to the other, I can automatically dial in the proper rotation for the framing on that particular target. So I really like having that in there, so I've added one for each of my systems. Behind here is the main reason for the upgrade, which is the new ZWO ASI 2600 MM Pro mono camera. This is an APS-C sensor, a little bit larger format, very sensitive. This is the second one I own. I have one for my AP-130 platform, had that for a while now. I just love the results I get from that. So I was quite excited to be able to add this onto the, this particular scope platform. I also had to replace the EWF, the electronic filter wheel assembly. With a larger format sensor, I needed to have larger filters. And while a lot of people go with two inch filters, which is a very good choice, it also makes things more expensive and it makes things a little bit larger and more clunky. I decided to go with a ZWO 7 by 36 millimeter filter wheel, or version 2. This uses 36 millimeter unmounted filters. So I have a larger filter. It's mounted very close to the camera. It's mounted right on the camera. And this allows me to have the widest field of view with a smaller filter. And uh, this is exactly the arrangement I use on my AP-130 platform. It's worked out really well, so I'm quite excited to have that now. The main platform here is mounted using a set of rings and dovetail that uh, came with a telescope. You notice that I've put another dovetail on the top and I've used that to do two things. I mounted another telescope on the top and it gives me an area to hide some cables tucked underneath. I'd like to talk for a minute about this scope that I have mounted on the top of the platform. This is a Sharp Star 61 EDPH2 Richfield telescope. Right now, it's set up and it's configured to be my guide scope. Well, obviously, this is overkill for a guide scope. So I had other things that I wanted to be using it for. My vision for this was to set this up such that I could have a more capable camera on the back end of it. Right now, I have a ZWO ASI 290 mini cam, which is great for guiding, but I'd like to get a color camera on there, which would be suitable for both guiding and imaging. And then the idea would be, when I'm using this particular platform, during the evening, if in one case I'm looking at a smaller object, then I use the main tube as the main scope, then use the smaller scope here as the guide scope. But if I was going for a very wide field object, I would switch and use the smaller telescope as the main scope, then use the main telescope as the guide scope, the most elaborate, expensive guide scope you've ever seen. But this would give me quite a bit of flexibility in the platform, and that's kind of what I'm working up to. Right now, my next task is to determine what camera I want to put on the back there, and then I'll be able to have that dual scope 
imaging capability built in. Because I wanted to use this scope potentially for imaging, you'll notice that I have a focus motor that's attached to it. This one is the ZWO EAF. It's actually the older unit, and you can tell that by the fact that it has two cords coming in, one for USB and one for power. The newer ones have a single USB coming in and it takes its power from that. But the idea here is that I could run autofocus routines when I'm using it for imaging. As it turns out, when I'm using it for guiding, it's very handy to be able to flip over to that particular scope and then do a focus series, an autofocus series, making sure that the guide scope has nice, sharp images for guiding. And that works out quite nicely. This whole assembly is mounted on an Ioptron CEM60 mount. This has been a real workhorse mount. I have two of them. They've handled large telescopes like this really well. I've had excellent tracking with it and excellent results. This is sitting on top of the Ioptron tripe here. This is the second setup that I have like that. And because it has a nice exposed column in here, I built my telescope lifter and mover, which rolls right up to the scope, it straps onto the column and lifts the entire scope assembly up and allows me to move it around from the driveway to the garage where I keep it. Now this particular flavor of the CEM 60 has a built-in polar adjustment camera, which resides right under this cover. This is the iPolar version. It's the only one that I have. All the other ones are pole masters, but I'm pretty happy with the way it works. It does what it needs to do. It's simple to set up and I get good polar alignment setups with it and I get very consistent results that way. To handle the load of this larger telescope, I ended up putting an auxiliary weight on the counterweight axis and this combination works pretty darn well. Now, in order to handle Z-axis balancing, I got this dovetail mount from ADM that has a nice horizontal bolt. And right now I'm using a stack of washers, which is the only weight I really needed. This bolted on off to the side handles my Z axis balancing quite nicely. As you can imagine with this many devices, there's a lot of cables that have to be managed. There's cables that are handling the power distribution and there's cables handling the USB. And my secret for handling this is a couple of things. First off with this extra plate on the top, this gives me a void underneath where I can coil excess cables and hide them. And right now, in order to mask this off a little bit and to hold them into place, I just got some uh, inch and a half wide elastic bands. Uh, this is something you can just pick up at Amazon. I wrap it around the base of the plate and that does two things. It holds the cables in so that they're kept nice and tidy and it sort of obscures the mess of cables that are under there so that works out pretty well. The rest of the cables are very carefully uh, cable managed. They're put into various bundles. They're fed around in such a way that they won't cause problems when the scope is in movement. Over here I have one cable that has to be a little bit loose here because I have to allow for the rotation of the entire camera platform here with the rotator. So I have this, which gives me just enough flex in there to be able to handle the rotation without having too many cables which are getting in the way. The key to this platform are these two boxes that are mounted on the top here. This particular box here is a Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box. This is basically used for a subset of my DC power distribution, and it also is being used to handle my uh, dew strips. Right now I have two coming off right here, which are connected to the dew strip on the smaller scope and the dew strip on the larger telescope. On the back here, you'll see that I have an environmental module that's mounted there. Uh, that allows the power box to manage almost all aspects of the dew strip warming as needed during the evening without my having to think about it. On the other side, you can see there are several power feeds that are coming off here. There's an input feed for power, and then there's the four outputs. These four power outputs are used to drive the two focus motors that I have, the Falcon rotator, and finally, it provides power for this particular box here, which I haven't talked about yet. But this is a StarTech industrial strength USB 3 hub. And basically it's powered and every device which is USB is plugged into this. I'm using up every slot in here. And this is handling the control. This is handling the control of USB one line comes out of this, and that one line is here. This goes to the laptop, which will be driving everything. The power is coming from a 30 amp 
solid state switching uh, power supply. I use it to run multiple scopes. I have a power line coming in. We have Anderson power pole distribution strip, which handles some of my power distribution. In that case, the power comes off of here and it feeds into the telescope mount itself. It also runs power up to the pocket power box. And of course we have a line coming off for the feed. As I said, this was the very first telescope that I ever bought. It first started off as the tube assembly with a very simple guide scope and a very simple one-shot camera. And over time, this evolved by my putting the top plate on, by uh, changing out the, the scope on top so that I have the option of doing wide field shooting versus guiding. I added on first a rotator, then I added on my first mono camera, which was an ASI 1600 mm Pro. And now with the most recent upgrade, what I've ended up doing is changing out this entire stack. And between the flattener and reducer, the more capable and larger format camera and the larger filter assembly, I now have a more capable system, a little bit shorter focal length, but a faster uh, optical system, which I said I think will serve me quite well. Even though I've hung a lot of instruments off this particular platform, it's still one of my favorite platforms. It's pretty compact. The cables are reasonably managed, and I don't have a problem with that. I think there's something kind of nice about the gold color with the Williams Optics scope and the red that comes in from the ZWO camera and the Sharp Star telescope on the top, which makes this look kind of snazzy, and I get a lot of reaction from this from people who see it. My other larger scope platform, the AP-130, is more of a traditional old-school scope, and so it's all pretty much black and white and doesn't have quite the, the personality, if you will. And people tend to really enjoy <laughs> looking at this scope and, uh, and seeing it, and I, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing it today as well. I've talked about my telescope lifter and mover, and I thought as I was putting the scope away, I'd just show you quickly what that looks like. Basically, I have two large scope platforms that both use the CM60 mount, and they're both mounted on a tripe here. So, working with a friend of mine, Rick Albrecht, he designed and I built this device, which is built off of a two-wheeler, and basically it's a platform that can slide up right underneath the telescope. I'm going to try to hold the camera one-handed and move this a bit. And when it's in its final position, I have a reinforced shelf that goes underneath it, and I have a docking collar in here. And then basically, I have clamp straps that will go around the telescope, and I'll strap it into position. Then, once it's strapped into position, this is a carriage, which is driven by a big jack screw and a drill. And I can use that to lift the telescope up off the ground and then move it. Okay, so now I have put the telescope into the horizontal parked position. I've taken all my coiled cables and hung them off the top scope. At this point, I'm ready to go. The telescope is fully assembled. It's fully balanced, it's ready to go. I can Now that it's picked up like this, I can roll this into the garage, drop it for storage. When I'm ready to do a night of photon capture, I can roll it out and I can drop it on the driveway in very precise position. And all I have to do is redo the alignment a little bit and I'm ready to go.